Welcome, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to the Real Life Real Estate Show, where we try to help you get your real estate wealth on. My name is Hector Hernandez. I am a real estate fund manager, longtime investor, and a wealth building and real estate coach right here on reallifetrading.com. Joining me today, and always my buddy, my pal, my co-host, Mr. Luis Alejandro Lopez. What you got going on for us today, buddy? Numbers, bro. Numbers. So, hello, everyone. My name is Luis Alejandro Lopez. I'm a real estate investing coach here in Real Life Trading, and we got a great show for you. Last week, okay, we were talking about finding a property and what, how do we walk, what do we look for, how we do an inspection, and roughly what the numbers and the monies are for repairs. The next part of it, it's figuring out the numbers of the money, how much that property is going to be valued at the end of our full complete project. Once we're done, how much can we sell it for? We run out of time last week, so we're going to be doing comps and comps and comps and comps this week. All right? But for now, first, disclaimer, as usual, we're two guys on the internet. We think we know what we do. We've proven that we know what we do. But please, please, if you're going to make a decision, if you're going to buy a house tomorrow because we just saw our video, make sure you talk to someone, talk to an attorney, talk to a friend, call somebody. Do not wear money if you're not being asked to. You know, you know we're all smart here, but there's always somebody that is kind of a little bit loopy. So we have to put this for her. We are doing this for now as education. And again, if you have any questions, if you don't know what you're looking for, if it sounds too good to be true, contact us. All right? Here we are. This this is new QR code. The other thing that we're doing, if you have funds and you want to put into work passively, you don't have to be doing any hammering. You don't have to deal with any toilets or anything. Just as if you scan this QR code, you're going to get to a this form, right? With this form, we're going to get all your information. Once we come with a project that is, you know, it's good, look good, looks to our names, we go to, to our numbers, everything kind of makes sense. We'll call you, hey, we have this. These are the numbers. We present the whole thing. If you're interested, you can invest with us. So again, QR code is here. This is the link for the form as well. Let me put it on the chat. Yeah, and what that does is um, a lot of people reached out last year, team, and mm -hmm. basically is like, uh, yeah, I want to deal with tenants, toilets, or termites. Yeah. Can we just partner with you guys or with people that you guys know? And so this is step one. First thing we got to do is we got to know that you're interested, and then we'll have a conversation, and then we'll go from there. Well, you know, some people like certain kind of investments. Others like other kind of investments. So right. if you guys are interested in real estate but don't want to deal with any of the headaches on your own and rather <laughs> partner with other people, Get on the form and uh, we'll reach out and we'll go from there. Okay. What else do you have today now? Boom. Ooh, 2024 mentorship. 2024 Boom. mentorships. We started the them. Okay. Now we're going back to basics. Last year we brought you a whole lot of information. but really got the feedback that you guys wanted to look and fix and flips. We're going to find a property, make it pretty. Put a nice bow, put it in the market, cash a check. So that's what we're doing. Okay. We're starting in March. We still don't have the dates. We want to be posting the dates, but it's going to be once a week. I'm doing evenings. Wednesday is eight o'clock. Hector is doing daytime. Thursday is at 12 30. And we're going to walk you through everything that we do on the show. We're going to walk you complete detail. How do we do everything? Tricks, tips, how to negotiate. How to purchase, how to negotiate the sell, how to deal with uh, contractors, how to deal with sellers, how to deal with real estate agents. Basically, the whole project we're gonna do give you a, a you know hand holding through how the whole process works. Okay, so we're starting in March. Keep it posted. Keep it on your mind. We're gonna be posting on Slack. We're gonna be posting on the next show. We're gonna give you complete dates. Okay, what else you got? Well. So we did uh, definitely a few of these last year. Yeah. And we still got some feedback from some people that um, they didn't feel quite comfortable still moving forward on their own. And so mm -hmm. what we're trying to work towards, and, and, and by all means, team, this is not fully designed yet. It is, it, it is a work in progress, but 
kind of what we want to do is do some on the job training, right? OJT. I don't know if you guys ever took that OJT program in high school. I sure did. I mean, I got to skip three classes to go to work and make money. So I was there like a bear at the fair. And so that's kind of what we've decided to do. We're going to open up the opportunity for those of you who have um, some experience or, or take our mentorship and want to do some flips and you just don't want to do it on your own for the first handful of flips. So we'll figure out a uh, partnership structure. We'll provide you with guidance from start to finish, phone calls, video calls, the whole nine yards. Obviously, you you know, you're going to have access to our calculators, our spreadsheets and um as well as our network. If it's in in the, um, an area where we're already active, we'll share the network of title companies, attorneys, realtors. Uh, if it's not an area where we're active, we still have a vast network of lenders that can help us put together the capital, which is yet another thing that uh, we got a lot of questions on last year, even with the two or three hard money lenders that we brought on and, and that they shared their programs, people still did not feel comfortable. So we will bring our network for that as well. And basically just partner with you guys. You guys will be in charge of the flip. Now, Lewis and I are not going to show up in your market and do the flip for you. <laughs> That's not this slide. That was the other slide. <laughs> this one is for those who want to roll up their sleeves and they want to do the, the fix and flip on their own um, um, business, but they just don't want to get started right away doing it on their own. And they would like a uh, partnership with Lewis and myself, who've been doing it for, I don't know, Lewis, what's been like 10, 12 years now? Man, what's 2024? Uh, a couple hundred deals. Years? 15 years yeah. we've seen a thing or two made a lot of mistakes like a lot <laughs> so we'll try to keep you from making those mistakes and you know we'll make a few together on our own but what we do know how to do is bob and weave around whatever things come up and so we can get us um, out of most situations <laughs> without uh bleeding too much cash this is important in this business we want to make Big bags of cash, right, Lewis? Not give big bags Sir, of cash or need big bags, cash. big bags of sexy cash. <laughs> and the other thing is that we we talk to a few of you. Some of you took mentorships. We talk, and then there's that little scare that you know taking the first step. It's it's different with real estate because it's not the same as trading. With trading, you click the mouse, you're in the trade. You click the mouse, you're out the trade. The psychological part of real estate is like you're all involved and you cannot get rid of it tomorrow and you need to ride this way regardless. So we, the whole idea is to, we, like Hector said, we had a whole bunch of years, we've seen it all, we made a whole bunch of mistakes and pretty much everybody is scared of the learning curve and how much if I mess this, if I mess that, if I mess that, if I, you know, mess everything. Our idea is to give you complete guidance from a project. You will find the project we will run the numbers together. If the numbers make sense and the project makes sense, we will walk you through the whole thing, okay? Yeah. We're going to make your learning curve as painless as possible as we can make, all right? And we're going to be partnering with you. We're going to give you funds. We're going to find you funds. And we're going to be with you, with you every step of the time. If, as soon as you purchase it, what the project needs to be, if you want to do decorations, how to handle the contractors, basically the same things that we spoke all last year we're gonna give that to you okay and we really the whole mission of real life trading is to enrich lives we've given you a lot of information but we want you to take the first step and that's why we're here okay let's so, execute let's execute on that information let's, let's, let's now. do it now I mean, we we did a whole bunch of stuff we talked about and this is the other thing is that this first quarter is fix and flip ideally we want to start doing similar things for different topics throughout the year. But this is our forte. This is what we've done since forever. So let's give you all the backup and all the push now and get you rolling. Okay. Now, a few things. Yeah. Yes. Very important because like very I important. was sharing, we are here to provide a partnership guidance and oversight I'm not here to do all the work and there's obviously going to be some some requirements and again this is a work in progress and so we're going to be shifting this program as the year goes on and as we do some of these and and we learn from from how it works what the dynamic is we're working with different people um but real basic if the property does not underwrite to a 70 percent after repair value arv to the cost that it's going to cost you 
to fully complete the project, hold it, pay the loan, et cetera, et cetera. It's not a project we're even going to look at. Um, you absolutely must have some skin in the game. While we can help with finding capital, providing debt, et cetera, et cetera, the person bringing the deal must have some skin in the game because at the end of the day, it's your project. We're here to provide with help. We're going to require certain little things like, you know, comparative market analysis, which by the way, hint, we're about to do one. <laughs> um, inspections from a professional. Um, these projects cannot be more than one hour's drive from you because we have found in our personal experience that any more than that, it becomes a drag. Things start to fall mm -hmm. through the cracks. We start to go left uh, less often to the project. So it's just, again, these are our years of experience here, making sure that we have a partner that stays engaged. The last thing we need is someone who just says, oh, never mind, this is too hard. And then, you know, Lewis has to jump on a plane to Ohio or, or I have to jump on a plane to... Uh, I don't know, Texas somewhere to finish up a flip that um, that we started with someone because we do always finish what we start, but that would not be a whole lot of fun and extremely unprofitable for us. <laughs> um, we're going to obviously require GC estimates. And last but not least, you must have taken our mentorship or have extensive experience, at least, you know, I don't know, half a dozen to a dozen flips of your own. And then at which point, we, you know, we understand that you can take it. And the reason for that is not because we're out here trying to sell mentorships, guys, on, on the contrary. We're trying to figure out a way of, after we do a couple of these, how do we refund you whatever money you spend on our mentorship? Still working on how that would work out. But the idea is that we need you to know the basics. We're going to be there to provide the guidance and the support and those phone calls, but the basics need to be there. Uh, and those are the basics and the in-depth uh, education that we teach in that mentorship that fix and flip mentorship that uh, we started last the year before or last year. I forget when we started doing them. Yeah, we've done, we've done three. That's so essentially it. If you guys have any questions on that, please reach out to Lewis or I on Slack. Please pop the questions into uh, the chat. If not, then we can uh, move forward with what we had planned for today, which is to finish up some numbers. Right. So what you got there? No, I know Rock's got, ready. He's got it. Yeah, got Rock that, is ready. Uh, Rock should be ready. He's ready. To Tina start was flipping. asking for his spreadsheets last week, so Tina should be ready too. Cindy knows the whole thing about how to, how to fix them, so it's a matter of just you know find them. <laughs> yep, and um, I do know this team. Emily has uh, been extremely helpful with some of the projects that we've done. And uh, so she's gotten a taste of what it's like to do project management and, and work with us. So feel free to reach out to her. And she's been through a couple of our mentorships. So she's gone the full gamut. Yes. And she actually helped us a lot with one of the projects down in Florida. She is so a much. boss. Um, she is that, a boss. That, that project would have been a total different... Um, I would have lost some of this hair if it was like because Emily was five minutes away. I, see, we'll look we, this honestly, we would, I wouldn't have taken the project. I would have been looking like Lewis. <laughs> if it was not for Emily, I don't even think I would have taken the project. There she is, our rock star in the chat. All right. How you doing, Ems? I miss you. I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, I haven't talked to Emily in a little bit. She's looking for deals. <laughs> I know she is. All right, right, I just so said we're gonna do comps, right? Yes, sir. We're gonna do comps. So I went to go yeah. see this house, and um, it was listed the day after I decided not to buy it mm -hmm. by a realtor who overpriced it and is e immediately off the market again. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to find many pictures of it. Try on realtor.com. If not, then I'll just share the MLS because I have the pictures yeah. on you're the not, MLS. You wanna take over the screen? Probably be easier. I, okay. Let me do this. Let me put it on this screen and I can share. Where is my share? Sometimes I forget how to use Zoom. On the bottom, mm -hmm. share screen, green button. All right. Let me know if you can see the MLS there. Yes, sir. All right. So I went to, I got a call from this random guy last week never heard of this guy before he got my number from a buddy uh i don't know if you remember the guy that signed the, the electrical permit for us the electrician that signed the permit for um for charlotte for us 
Mm -hmm. I guess he gave this guy my phone number. He's essentially an off-market realtor and got this lead of a uh, beautiful, beautiful, crispy house. <laughs> nice. It, um, yes. Looks like the one I saw the it looked, other day. It looked like an overcooked chicken nugget. <laughs> it smells <laughs> like barbecue right there, I'm sure. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so this, I guess, has been in his network, the buyer, the seller, or whatnot. And so the guy called me, he had a very short window to get the job done. And the guy who recommended us knows that we could get the job done in a very, very swift, um, you know, very fast, very expeditiously. Essentially, he was given 24 hours to get the property on their contract or it was going to wind up on the MLS exactly like it did. And so I immediately jumped on it, it's, went out to go see it, but then I did numbers and the numbers just weren't quite there. So my offer did not really move the needle for them. Right. So what we want to do today is kind of share with you guys two things. Number one, on a project this big, do Lewis and I whip out our spreadsheet and start tallying up numbers? Absolutely not. This is a whole, it's already been gutted, thank God. So, you know, saved a little bit of money there. But as you guys can see, these trusses are like half of them are burnt. So mm -hmm. building department is probably going to make me replace that. So immediately from the place, I took a video, I took a picture, I made two phone calls, one to my favorite uh, roofer, the other one to my favorite GC. I had an idea. I'm pretty sure I'm like, hey, I know I could get this project done anywhere between 160 and 200 grand. So more around there is where this rehab is going to come in. But that's a pretty wide margin. And these guys were trying to get, they wanted me to offer 275, exactly what it was listed for. And so I didn't really think that was possible. I did my numbers. I called my GC. Like I said, I called my roofer. Hey, these trusts, these trusses, they're, I know they're, they're expensive. They're hard to get right now. They're taking like three to four months just to be able to get them. So um, you see, there's a couple that are good, but a good chunk of them need to be redone. And at that point, there's a big chance the building department makes us take them all off and put them brand new. So that's what I got to estimate. That's what we have to run numbers on. Um, so when the GC got back to me, he told me, hey, underwrite at least 190K to be on the safe side. I'll probably get it done under 100, around 170 to 180 for you, but we need that oops factor in there. So mm -hmm. that's basically the number that I, that I used was, um, I stuck to my 200 grand number because again, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of room. Um, and the roofer basically, confirmed the numbers that the GC gave me for the trusses and the roof. And so in that case, I was just wanting reassurance on the number on the, you know, the, the hairier thing here, because like I said, trusses are a little bit easier to get right now, but there was a huge dry spell last year that were impossible to get. And roofing materials had also been a little bit scarce. So the guy, the, the GC is going to rely on a roofer. So I went to the source. Uh, my buddy Bobby, who you know, Lewis, and mm -hmm. he always picks up the phone. We've done a, I've done a lot of business with the guy over the years, so over a phone call, he can put my put my mind at ease or stress me out, whichever one I need. Uh, so today, what we want to do is kind of look at the reasoning why I decided to walk on this deal, basically. And I didn't fully walk; I just gave him a two twenty, uh, I believe, was my offer. Uh, let me look at my spreadsheet here. My max offer on this guy was, yeah, 220. And so essentially, go ahead. From 274. It's kind of the same situation from, at the house that we were looking last, last week in the last show. Yeah. And, and, but, the, same thing. but dude, the 50 I mean, grand about. But it was listed previously at three and change last year. I mean, you know, the guy is just trying to make some money. Interestingly enough, you'll you'll see something that's really, really interesting. This guy bought it in 2021. 21. For uh, 137. He started to, he got it. He started to do his thing. And then my understanding is that he's out of state and it became a little bit difficult to actually get the job done from so mm -hmm. far away and he's got he's got plenty of equity i mean really he could have sold it to me at 220 and still made 50 grand and still make money yeah because i mean how much is the you know, 30 40 grand 
really, plus permits, plus whatever else. You know, and that may have been where the challenge came, honestly, now that you mentioned that, because he did start to pull permits and everything, uh, Then, and that's where things got complicated for them. They started to get revisions. Uh, you know, they didn't have a solid team down here, and you know how it goes, man. When you're doing a project this big, the yeah. building department is going to want to dot every I and cross every T, yeah. so they're going to essentially be pretty picky on on, on, on that. Everything, yeah. That rule falls off, and then it's their fault. Exactly. So at first, realtor pitches it to me like, hey, this is a 550 exit. I immediately pull these up and I'm like, uh, bro, where? How? <laughs> um, and so that was definitely one of the difficulties. And I gave it a premium over even like this one, Lou, because everything's going to be brand new, right? We're going to make a new windows, new new roof clips. So we're going to, the year build is essentially going to be 2024. So it's going to be good for insurance, but still, the market can only support what the market can support. This is a beautiful, beautiful flip that this flipper did a really nice job on the interior. The exterior, I, I would have done a few more things, but the interior looks great. That's pretty. Nice, modern. You know, they're doing the, the shelvy things like we discussed. Mm -hmm. The shelves and are- that works because they have that big window back there. Yep. We definitely would have done impact windows, so we would have had a leg up on these guys on that. They also have this beautiful sunroom back here that we don't have. So, I mean, just an all-around fully remodeled property. While we could have done a handful of things to enhance the property and make the buyer fall more in love with ours than something like this that is perfectly beautiful, the appraiser is still going to appraise the home as this is this is a fully remodeled home and so this this would carry a lot of weight in in our appraisal and so i didn't yeah, feel super comfortable let's say if you replace the windows what's that another 10 15 on the appraisal pops yeah Four i wound up uh lighting? i use a 515 arv and okay. and that was my way of giving it a premium and you know and again th that is the frostiest one here because there is you know 419 and and you know we're kind of on this main boulevard here too so that takes a little bit of a beating but this guy just closed you know this makes us look bad man it might be a little bit smaller but it closed for 387 yeah one bathroom only but again one bathroom this is, is a, what, 10, uh, 25. Mm -hmm. and you know so this one is 1400 square feet three two but realistically speaking it was a two two somebody just added some you know a third bedroom there but it, it was reasonable i could have made it work we could have done some nice it's design cool, around it but again i gotta go on comps and comps the highest sales that i got are you know is this one it's the 500 oh wow thank you man appreciate it somewhat updated thank you Don't you just love it when your wife comes through and brings you more water? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And a snack too, but I won't snack while we're on the mic, I promise. So anyway, we had a pool too. So, you know, this one, we would have been a little bit of a leg up on this one also. And perhaps I went a little conservative and I could have done like a 520, but I was far apart, man, from the, from his number. So yeah, I didn't from feel 20. like narrowing the gap at all. This guy is pending, but I can't use this as a comp, as you know, because we don't know if it's going to close at this. For all we know, this guy accepted 520. Yeah. And this is much larger than ours. Mm -hmm. And it's Thank spectacular. You. I don't like the colors, but everything is done. Yeah, everything is nice. It's done. This one has impact windows, impact doors. Look at look at this this bathroom, man. It's phenomenal tile work. They got the little body spray shower. And they looks like they staged it really well. They're probably still living there. They might have or might have been an Airbnb. I wouldn't be surprised. That's true too. There's a few of those selling in this area. And then, 
so this is the way that we share with you all, right? Um, this is a, a tool that I use because I have access to the MLS, but this is essentially how you guys could be doing your own comms just by the realtor.com does this very same exact thing. And that's exactly what I do when I'm playing in a market that I don't have MLS access. I jump on realtor.com and I start looking at the closed sales in the area and the active sales. I put more weight on the closed sales, like I just said, than the active. This is listed for $5.99. There's going to be someone out there that's going to use this as a comp, not me. I've seen plenty of these get listed here. And then they reduce, they reduce, they reduce, and then eventually winds up selling at the 528. <laughs> yeah, Meanwhile, here happened. I go starting a starting a 12-month project thinking, oh man, I can sell it for 550, 600 grand because this guy is asking 600. When I finish my nine or 12 month worth of construction on that crispy house, this guy had sold for 528. And that is now my comp. So you have to be very, very cautious with that team, especially when you take long projects on. If I'm doing a quick, you know, uh, like Lewis likes to call it lipstick on a pack, on a, a lipstick on a pig, or we're just painting, maybe slapping in a new kitchen and, and flooring, we're going to have that done in three to four months. I'm a little bit um, less sensitive and I could be a little bit more aggressive on thinking that today's market is today's market. And yes, I know Jay Powell said he's going to drop rates, so... The, the the thinking from the realtor who was trying to sell me the house is like, hey, it's slow season, summer's coming up. Yes, summer's coming up, but by the time I'm done with this property, it'll probably be next winter. <laughs> this is going to take at least nine <laughs> to 12 months to do this thing. So yeah, I'm going to be right back in slow season. I'm going to be hitting the market in November next year, October if I'm lucky. <laughs> so... It's I gotta play on on real numbers. I I we we've said it before. We do forced appreciation. We do not wait for oh the market hot season summer. I don't use any of those numbers. I don't take any of those numbers into account. And there's plenty of flippers that do more deals than me because they do. They take those numbers into account. Now the question is, who's more profitable on a five year run, <laughs> and who has way less stress during those five years? <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing what with, you those, with those contractors, with those flippers, is that sometimes they have their own crew, and regardless, they need to keep the crews busy. So if they don't pull up a, a, a profit on one, at least the crews are working, they're getting paid. It's you know, they, they it's more of a point of view of the 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 business itself as a per project profit. Yeah. And we are here to show you because again, once you become a professional and you get your own company, okay, the numbers are going to change. But for here, we don't have a crew. We hire everybody, you know, on a on a per you know per project basis. So again, we need to pay. It's usually a little bit more expensive once you pay somebody per project. That way, you have an employee. You know, it is what it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If a GC was to buy that property, they would instantly save between fifteen and twenty percent that that GC is going to charge me to GC the project. Yep. And, you know, from signing the, the permit with his license to putting his crews, like Lewis said, his insurance and everything else that needs to happen from a contracting standpoint. You know, that's 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 his margin, right? He's got to charge me cost plus his 15 to 20 percent margin. So automatically my GC that, you know, let's say, like I said, I used a two hundred thousand dollar number. He could he could get the project done for one hundred and sixty grand. He could save 20, 40 grand on that project. That's automatically um and and maybe even more right because again he's got to make money so he could probably get that project done for a lot less than me but um i don't wear that many hats i am an investor i i uh, decided not to get a gc license many years ago and this is another comp that i had used that i looked at which is fairly recent right mm -hmm. from november that's what we like to look i like to look these days on things that are no more three than months. 90 days three months yep. And, you know, it's like a hundred square foot smaller, very nicely remodeled. There's some things that we would have done better, obviously the flooring and blah, 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 but it's got a brand new kitchen and it's got everything else. And it's a three, two. I think this one had a pool touch too. The bathroom. Yeah, it's got the pool. I'm sorry. They didn't touch the bathroom. That, there was a, this is a lipstick on a pig. They painted outside, they painted inside. That old floor, they kept the same flooring. Yeah, yeah, the, the bathroom, bathroom would have done a good job. 
But mm -hmm. again, it is what we were going to do worth another hundred grand to put ours at 550. No, no chance. See, that's, that's where, you know, the numbers broke for me. No chance. And even then, realistically speaking, uh, had I been able to do 550, I probably would have still not been able to get to their 270 number, right? I would have been closer to like two, 250, 260. And, and there's again, absolutely they'll be greedy. They bought it for 135. They probably have put what 40, 50 in it. And they wanted to sell yeah. for 275. They wanted to double their money. <laughs> Here goes another closed sale, four bedroom, two bathroom, 1900 square feet. Yeah. 500. And so those were the challenges that I was having when I was just looking at these comps. Tile, tile roof, that thing is way more expensive than regular. Yeah. And and you know, I don't love the floor, but it's 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 a nice upgraded floor with a beautifully upgraded kitchen. I don't love that it's super enclosed, but again, and an appraiser is gonna appraise it as a new kitchen. That's all they yeah. care about. Yeah, that's all they care about. Impact windows and team, the way that I can tell it's an impact window is the frame. Here in Florida, we have hurricanes. Impact windows add a lot of value, they're also very pricey. We would have had to do them, and these guys have them on. I could tell by the thickness of the frame. Right there. If it wasn't uh, impact, it would be much thinner. I got some sort of an addition going on here. So then I did this right here, which is what we would suggest that you all have your Realtors do anytime you're looking at a project. When Lewis and I were saying the list of requirements for us to partner on a deal was a comparative market analysis, which is almost this that I'm doing right now, except I'm not going to print it out. And your realtor would send you this. So. And depending on where you at, we usually in Florida we use the same literally the same subdivision because most of these homes are fairly newish. And they're pretty much cookie cutters. So you can figure out very easy how to 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 make the numbers on just the select subdivision. If you have different places, like here in Georgia, there's a whole bunch of homes that are not in subdivisions. You know, they're they're smaller, so they're not like a homeowners association kind of place. Uh, then you have to go half a mile or a full mile out. Okay. But you can you you should do Usually the comps in the same characteristics. So if I'm looking for a three bedroom, the, my my subjects are three bedroom. Try to look at the numbers on three bedrooms. Try to find the, the properties that have two bedrooms just like this one. Be as close as you can first to see what's sold, and then start looking out. All right, and then you're gonna figure out in your market how much each one of those additions are worth. How much is an extra bedroom? How much is having a garage? How much is having an extra bedroom? And then you add it up to your subject, to the final value of your subject. Okay. That's usually what your broker is going to yep. do. And they actually have formulas for that. And it will, you know, the, the website will speed a number at the end or a range. Yep. And then, so essentially, what, what you guys saw me do here while Lewis was talking is the first thing this tool does is it selects within half a mile the last mm -hmm. three months of sales. And then there's a couple of things that I got to do. Like Lewis said, I got to get rid of this one because this is inside of a subdivision. I can tell there's probably a gated community and all of these houses are, you know, right in that little cul-de-sac where we're, uh, we're here in a little bit more of a busy so that Number street. two shouldn't, you, you shouldn't use that number two. Yeah. So sadly, and then it also has a garage. So it's two things against that. We don't have a garage. It does have a pool like us, but it's inside of that subdivision, which is, Location, 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 right? People are willing to pay a little bit more if there is security, maybe there, there is a uh, a community park, whatever the case may be. For some people, it's inconvenient. You know, the HOA, I, I'm not a huge fan, but some people love it. And in fact, they only want to live in gated communities. And so automatically the appraiser gives it a little bit of a bump. Not to mention this road right here, this is just from me knowing the market, University is a major yeah. road. Completely different neighborhood on one side and the other. So yeah. all of these right here are pretty much in the same vicinity with exception to number three. And number three, this is similar neighborhoods, similar style homes. 
And in the interest of the fact that we only really have four comps and I like to have at least four, I'm going to leave it in there. But, you know, if I had a few more up here, I would probably can it. And that's basically the same thing that I was seeing, right? It's 500 is my median number. 550, you know, would be the absolute top of the market. Like the realtor was suggesting that I should shoot for. And as a rule of thumb, I never shoot for the top of the market for my underwriting. <laughs> I might list at the top of the market later. Like, like I said, on this project, I underwrote, you know, a, a 510 or a 515 exit. When it's all said and done, the house comes out so beautiful. I sit back, I look at it, and I'm like, hey, maybe I spend, you know, five grand on staging and then I list it. 549.99. Exactly. But it doesn't, my, my numbers don't depend on that. That's just a gravy extra of $30,000, $40,000 if I get it. If I have to start reducing because the property lingers on the market, there's zero stress on my mind. My realtor will have clear and concise dates as to when she starts to reduce that, the, that number after the first 30 days. Boom, execute a reduction. If I was underwriting 550 and 549 is not selling, I'm not excited to reduce. <laughs> now that's when you see people reduce $1,000. It's like, come on, you're reducing $1,000 on a $500,000 listing. You got to get aggressive, you know? Gonna and make so it, you want to make it hot, back on the hot list. <laughs> yes. It. It's kind of like with trading, right? You know, okay. same thing with trading. Have your trading plan. Know when to move your stops, how to move your stops. Have a methodical way. Like Jeremy says, go from 1R to 0.7 to 0.5. Like, you know, that methodical. Same thing that we try to implement in real estate. And so I never underwrite the top of the market ever. That's just a rule. And so, you know, I went kind of on the lower end of the, on the medium end of it, I should say, not the lower end. And mainly because we had, we were going to have such a beautiful finished product. Any thoughts, questions, or concerns there, Lou? I can't yeah, really see the thing chat. I wanted to say, you can take the risk of going top of the market if it's a really quick project. Again, it depends also on, 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 on the conditions of it. If I'm going to go and I'm going to put a kitchen and I'm going to put some floor and do a bathroom and I'm in and out in again, two, three months, and I can ask for the same 550, we know the comps right now kind of support it, but we don't have the crystal ball. Crystal ball is at the dealership because he had a noise. So what's going to happen in six months? We don't really know. We, we have no idea. So we can still see, you know, if it's a quick thing, you can be a bit more aggressive because again, the other part is you're going to have all the costs of the property for an additional six, seven, eight months. So that's taxes, insurances, um, uh, what else? It's the alarm, utilities, uh, all those things and interest of the money that you're using. That's a big one. Okay. You need to pay the mortgage if you don't have the full funds to, you know, to keep the whole project going. So, Again, the faster the project, I'd rather make, it's, and it's a thing that, that we discussed with Hector a whole bunch of times, I'd rather make 10 grand now in, in, in a month than make 30 grand in six months. See what I'm saying? So you can you can play with those things. The more complicated the project, the more profit or the more percentage you might want to keep because you have to manage a whole bunch of people. Okay, remember your time, you're, you're trying to make money out of your time. Okay, so try to make it the most that you can. And, you know, try to to go plan everything as the roughest estimate that you can. So you have nicer prices instead of having nicer, nasty surprises. Yeah. I heard, um, I heard uh, a developer say this recently he's like man if the deal doesn't make sense on the back of a napkin i don't need to put it in my spreadsheet <laughs> he's like i'm out <laughs> instantly and so that's um I, I mean lucian said it here in the chat it's perfectly well more trades doesn't mean more profit more flips doesn't necessarily mean more profits we are very picky very choosy and what we choose to invest our time and our and our money in for sure. Mainly, honestly, 
I picked some not so profitable ones at the beginning, you know, I realized like, man, yeah, it's a lot of headache for a seven month project. <laughs> and then I did some, you know, two month project and I'm like, man, this is really cool, you know, getting in and out. So it's, um, I've always said this, if you guys have heard me before, I like a risk adjusted return. I have a range where I want to be at. The more risk, the higher on the range I'm going to be. The easier, the lower on the risk, I'm uh, on the scale I'm willing to be in terms of profit because the velocity of money does matter. But this is by any means not an easy project. It is extremely risky. There is probably a good, I don't know, 25 inspections that I have to pass on a project like that. Any yeah. single one of them. You have to pull fail. all the permits. Everything yeah. gets done. And, every, and everything, the rough. The electrical, the framing, the roofing, everything, the nailing pattern on the roofing, the drying on the roofing. I mean, from A through Z, oh, you know, when we start taking out all that stuff, I got to even close in the pool and close in the trees. All of that could fill inspection. And that goes another week. And there goes another mm -hmm. week. And next thing you know, my nine month project ends in a year and, and a couple months. And so that's the things that you have to look at when you take on these challenging projects. Cindy asked if it was a um an electrical kitchen fire. fire so let me see if i can find the picture looked like was it was in the picture. kitchen it looked like it was no it was not it was actually in the bedroom i, I thought the same thing when i first got there see, this, yeah. so you see right here this is the worst part here this is what would be the master bedroom oh okay and and it and then on this on the other side of this wall is the window that got blown out by the fire so the fire started in a closet that was just outside this wall here in the what was another bedroom so th these areas are the the worst areas worst. um right here okay you see right there in the back this window right here that doesn't have a window mm -hmm. so this is more or less where the fire originated and and obviously this is a concrete wall so the wall that didn't face the wall fine. Yeah. and this the this right here is like completely melted the fire department had to like i guess blow it out it, yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought it was like a grease or or, or an electrical yeah. fire. But and look, not... and look at that roof. They have to replace yeah. all the, the roof. Yeah, this whole thing is gone. Everything. Look, it's, look at this. I I mean, there's like this trust is is okay on the bottom, but look at the top. It's crispy. Yeah, all that's the... gotta go. And usually, when we do a roof here, if we have to re-roof a house, for the most part. All that wood stays. So yes, we 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 rip everything off. We repair all the wood that needs to be repaired, and then we put the we put the asphalt. We put everything. Then we put the shingles or we put the tiles, depending on what we're doing. But that's usually a fifteen twenty thousand dollar roof. And like he's saying now, that roof that's gonna be forty or fifty, and I will say even more because all the trusses, you know. Just the, the horizontal. The, so the, the trusses, the trusses. Um, I got a quote. They're gonna be somewhere between like twenty three to twenty five k. Mm -hmm. That's just the trusses. Then you gotta add all the plywood. Yeah. For the decking on the roof, and then and, the roof, and then the shingles. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let them sit on it. That's the only thing you can yeah. do. So, I mean, they, they took it off the market. I don't know what was happening. The guy that brought it to me had a certain... Um, um, when you're talking about uh, sheeting, uh, Cindy, are you talking about the the deck on the roof? I, I call it a deck. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I yeah, exactly. So once we replace all of these, uh, these trusses, like Cindy was saying, then now we got to do all this crispy plywood that's up there so again it's you know 25 grand on on the framing itself which is the trusses then you probably have 20 grand in the actual roof with uh shingles and all that you know the drying portion and probably like five grand in wood easy that's why it's like you know, 40 50 you have no ac so you need to do all the ducts completely yep. new that's yeah. a good 20 grand, 18 grand plus the machine. Yep. And then we got to do the um, insulation, the whole thing. That's why, mm -hmm. man, I did not 
even pop open my spreadsheet, bro. I went, I took my video, I took my pictures, called Bobby, called the GC, and said, hey, guys, here's the video, here's the picture. What do you think? Can I get this done under 150 grand? No. <laughs> be closer to 200 okay perfect that's kind of what i suspected i you know i popped the numbers in my spreadsheet no go no go yeah this is like the one i posted the um the other day in the slack that was in tennessee yeah that they're looking to they fell on my lap same thing they got the call and but um the same thing it's somebody somebody ripped it off inside they bought it to fix it they stopped the fixing it they basically demolished everything and then oh we need to sell it and they want to sell it for 80 grand when the comps are 120. So what's the point? And they bought it for 35. You know how that goes. <laughs> I love it. Well, hey team, our time is almost up. We're going to start wrapping up here. And does anyone have any questions? I think he's asking, do you well, have to treat the suit on the block? I'm not familiar with, with uh, the suit, the suit. Um, but the block now, the block, we just scrub, we clean it, um, get rid of all the stains and then all the, the little um, tiny, the, we call them furries in Spanish. I honestly don't know the English word, <laughs> but the furries, basically those do need to be replaced, which are basically the studs that are stuck to the concrete block. Um, and that's how the drywall gets put up. But all of that just mainly gets scrubbed and cleaned. If the concrete has any any damage to it, which it didn't, then yeah, that just gets patched. And the worst case scenario, the other thing you can do is just after everything is done, just to prevent smell, just put a whole bunch, uh, uh, a whole layer of uh, paint of kilts, and kilts take care of. Something. You know what? It didn't even smell already that that much, okay. honestly. I, I they since they did a nice job removing all the drywall and and cleaning it. There, um, these guys use it's not bleach, and we've used similar for to treat mold, but it's it's a special chemical that hand, that does all that disinfecting and and removes all the smell. It's a little bit a step above like bleach, basically. Okay, I don't know what the the chemical compound is, but it's very similar to what the mold guys use, and it gets rid of all that stuff. All righty, so let's, where's my Zoom here? So let's wrap it. Boom. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That was um, a quick lesson on checking your ARVs and taking uh, at face value what uh, the realtor selling it to you has to say. Right, Yates? <laughs> <laughs> You know how it is. The, the 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 job is to sell it. They don't care who takes it. <laughs> the headache. But again, any questions, any comments? If you want, if you want to see us doing more comps, please let us know. You can find us at real estate at real .com. You can find us with the QR codes. Each QR code takes you know take you to Hector. The other one takes you to takes to me. All my email, phone number, all the information is there. If you want more information of the stuff that we posted, it's reallifetrading.com forward slash RE. Okay, that's where we live here on the on, on Real Life Trading website. And with this, we'll wrap it. We'll see you guys in two weeks. We'll have more information about mentorships and everything then. And have a great weekend. Thanks, everyone. Love y'all.